Oh, no, he's a good guy. <laughs> oh, he's dead now. Okay, so I did a video on Raspberry Pi 64-bit versus 32-bit, and uh, it was interesting results, but the power supplies I was using uh, weren't giving enough voltage when it was under duress. So when it was using handbrake, uh, they were basically giving an under voltage warning, so it would have been throttling itself. So uh, I figured I'd order another official Raspberry Pi adapter, which is this one here. I've had this one pretty much since the start of having my Raspberry Pi, and it's been great. This is a white one, so I can tell them apart, but it's exactly the same power, so I can run that test again. Anyway, because I was paying for postage, I figured it was a cheap way to buy a Raspberry Pi Zero W. And this is the one with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, and as you can see, it is ridiculously small when compared to the Pi 4. I'd never tried one of these before, and I know a lot of you will, have, uh, will already have one because they're so cheap and you might as well. So the specs are very different. Uh, we only have 512 megabytes of RAM on this. You can go right up to 8 gig on the Pi 4. Uh, and also the processor, so it's a quad core 1.5 gigahertz versus a single core 1 gigahertz on the Raspberry Pi Zero. But I've been amazed at how many things have actually run on it and running it all right. Now, I'm going to show it running an operating system. I wouldn't be running an operating system from it, but I was just intrigued to see how well it did. But for retro gaming, uh, it's surprising what things still run on this. So let's get it all plugged in and have a look. Okay, so a couple of options for USB. So this is an on-the-go adapter, and this plugs into this socket because this one's for power. Uh, and it gives you a USB-A on the end of it, so you can plug in a normal USB device. Uh, but I tend to use this one, and I can't really find any links for this one. I've tried before. This is quite an old USB on-the-go adapter, um, so you can, you can supply power, uh, which can power the USB devices separately. Uh, it's also switchable, so you can switch between different modes, but basically I've got my keyboard plugged into here, uh, and also I'll plug my controller in later on when I use RetroPie. I'm using a mini HDMI adapter, which you can see there, uh, and this is a normal HDMI cable. But uh, it's already plugged in, and you can see there's no lights on it, and I didn't know if it had any lights at first. Uh, but basically, it's, uh, it's only when you plug an SD card in that it lights up. So if we pop an SD card in, now if I take power away and put power back in, it detects the SD card and it will start booting now. And so this we're running Raspberry Pi OS is the first operating system I'm putting on here. I'm going to switch over to screen capture, but the initial boot does take quite a while. Uh, as I say, this isn't what the Pi Zero is, is intended for, but I still think it's great that it can run it. And uh, if you're running smaller projects or uh, operating systems without a graphical user interface. Okay, so this is Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, and uh, let's just start up Chromium just to show you how slow uh, it starts up. And this isn't a criticism, this isn't what you're meant to use the Pi Zero for, but there are certain applications that you could use a desktop for that I think still work. Uh, so things like uh, showing photos on there, backing up files, things like that all work pretty well. Um, and uh, when you use things like the menus and things, Actually, it's all right. I mean, this is trying to run Chromium at the moment, so that will be taking up a lot of the RAM. But uh, yeah, it, it flicks through these things reasonably quickly. If I hover over these, uh, it doesn't take too long for them to come up. Actually, it's a lot longer when Chromium is running. But let's do a search. So let's try Hot UK Deals. You could hear me typing, but you couldn't see anything come up. But it, yeah, it has got it. There we go, so enter. Don't worry, this gets a lot more impressive, but I just wanted to show it running a desktop because I, I don't think I've seen anybody running a desktop operating system from it. And I was just intrigued as to how well it ran. Um, but like I said, if you say you had uh, a smartphone and you want to back up your photos on a computer, you don't have any other computers. This computer that costs less than £10, can, uh, you can have storage attached to it. You could plug your phone in, you could copy your files over uh, and then maybe up upload them to a cloud service or just keep them locally backed up. But uh, you can see here, it's taken its time. And uh, I'll leave it running in real time because I think it's a, it's a fair test. But yeah, even this DuckDuckGo screen, which would normally load up very, very quickly, it's really struggling with. Uh, and the Wi-Fi, I'm in the same room as the, my router, um, so it's not going to have a problem with weak Wi-Fi or anything like that. It's coming. I've also tried Puppy Linux, and uh, that 
I think is a bit faster. It's about it's about the same. There's not much in it, um, but uh, it was just another operating system that was very lightweight that I thought m might be worth trying. Um, but uh, really, you are better off without something with a graphical user interface. Come on. And this isn't even a, it loading the Vertigo. So if I now click on the page, which I don't know if it's even detected that it's clicked on the page. Okay, it's coming now. I'm going to put on the screen how long it took to get to that point. So when the green first appeared, because obviously it still hasn't loaded the page yet, um, but it's still going through it. But this would be a page with lots of information on it. But you can see that Chromium doesn't lend itself to 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, these days. If I try and scroll down, let's have a look. Oh yeah, we can scroll. But that did did take a long time. Not usable uh, in this particular usage. So let's copy a file from my network. So this is a NAS drive connected to my network. Uh, and there's a GoPro video here, which is 137 megabytes. So let's copy that and paste that onto the desktop. And I'll put on the screen how long the process took rather than you have to wait through seeing it go all the way through, but it looks like it's gonna take less than a minute. There you go, that's all done. And I'll put the time on the screen now. And let's see if we can play that video file. And here it is playing that video file. I just need to check what the file is. Let's stop that. Video playback's all right, actually. Media information, that'll probably be it. Yeah, 1920 by 1080, pretty good. So let's show a bit of Puppy Linux. So it takes an absolute age to start up on Puppy Linux on the Pi Zero. And uh, as you can see, recognizing media devices, optical input. Don't know where it's found that from. Okay, so this is what I thought would have possibly been better, um, but it's pretty bad on the Pi Zero and takes an absolute age to start up. You can see the operating system, uh, well actually that's slower than Raspberry. Oh no, it's filled it in now. There's quite a lot of stuff on this as well. And I uh, haven't really gone through it much because, oh, there is fun there, look. Pipe Panic and X Invaders 3D. Oh, there you go. Let's have a look at this then. Space to start. Oh, <laughs> hold on, what's the pop-up? Oh, wow, this is like a 3D, it's like Space Invaders, but... Oh, that's, that's quite difficult, but it, it feels all right. Well, let's do what we'd normally do and clear off the bottom row. For, or you can, can you curve it? Yeah, you can actually curve your, <laughs> oh, that's quite tricky. Uh, so X invade, it's weird how certain things feel really snappy and fast. And you can see now it feels like it's all right, really. And you probably find that some, uh, various different things like uh, you know photos and uh, paint and things like that will be fine on it because obviously they've been around for years. So anyway, my experience was that it was pretty slow um, and uh, and not particularly usable on the Pi Zero. Although again, on the Pi Four, it's it's lightning fast. So let's uh, shut this down and let's boot up RetroPie. So this is the setup I'm using now. So you can see I'm using that same USB hub. Uh, and I've got my Xbox wireless controller, uh, which works really well with it. So let's plug it in and start that up. So RetroPie works on quite a few systems, but others don't. Amiga is just that bit too slow. Uh, Arcade works, but obviously Arcade spans many years. Uh, I've just got one game on there. Game Boy Advance works fine, although I found the audio a bit weird. Game Boy Color is obviously fine. Mega Drive, absolutely fine. Uh, N64, I'd read some other people had said that uh, Mario Kart and also Mario 64 worked, but I found them too slow to be able to play. Uh, some of the ports are super impressive, and I'll come to that in a minute. PlayStation, depends on the game, uh, audio issues, but um, some of them play okay. Uh, so let's start off with Super Nintendo, uh, and this is Desert Strike. And this plays surprisingly well. Oh. Not if you crash into your boat though. Uh, you can check your map and see where everything is. There you go, I've got to take out the radars. There you go, and I, I'd i forgotten how good this was. I used to play this on the Amiga and uh, I'm sure the graphics were better on the Amiga, but, uh, but this is lovely and fast. Oh. 
but yeah, it plays it plays absolutely fine. Really, really impressed. Uh, looks decent. The sound is good. Really nice. So let's quit out of that and try something else. So uh, Spectrum, for some reason I couldn't get the keyboard to work, uh, but that's more just configuration. I've got no issue with that working. Uh, so on the Amiga, yeah, it just was very, very slow uh, and not really playable. Maybe some games might be better than others. So this is 1942 on MAME and, uh, and this worked really well. So select to insert a coin and start to play. And this feels lovely and responsive. It's an old game, and obviously, depending on how old the arcade game is, as to how well it's going to run. So let's quit out of that. Uh, game Boy Advance. Uh, so something like Virtua Tennis plays pretty well. Not perfect, but but pretty much there. And I haven't really played around a lot with settings because I don't really intend to use this as my main retropy one. I was just doing it to see how well it worked, and uh, there's there's more impressive coming up. You can hear it slowing down a bit on the music, but actually the gameplay doesn't seem to slow down that much. Oh, that's terrible. It occasionally slows down on the music, but uh, overall I think it's fine. It's certainly playable, and again, different games are going to play better than others. Let's see if we can get an ace. Oh, not quite. Oh, we got him. Game Boy Color. Now this Scrabble game, uh, this is just to show this game, because obviously Game Boy Color is going to work on there absolutely fine. I used to play this on an old Nokia phone on a Game Boy Color emulator uh, years and years ago. I had it on an N-Gage, but I had it before that on a much older Nokia phone, and it was great. I used to spend hours playing this. And it's a really good version of Scrabble, really easy to play. So here we are. So you just basically select your letters and pop them up and when you've got that just press down and click OK. It checks and then it will move on to the next one. So Mega Drive uh, works really well as well. I mean Mega Drive and SNES have been working well on emulation for years so it's no surprise but it's just again on the size of this device it's so nice to see. Oh wrong way. And this, this runs absolutely fine, doesn't, doesn't seem to slow down at all, the music's a bit annoying, but uh, that probably can be turned off. Mario 64 is not even worth showing, the menu is incredibly slow, but I haven't tried Mario Kart yet, so I might as well try it in the video. Oh, and it quit out. If it does that, you can always uh, try pressing the button when it's loading up, and you can try a different emulator. So if you keep pressing the B button, there you go, it skips into this, and then we can change so we've got loads here, let's try plus. And launch. So it might be that one of the other emulators performs better on N64, but the general consensus was N64 wasn't good, but as I say, someone had mentioned that uh, Mario 64 and Mario Kart. Uh, so it would take a bit more playing around with. Now ports, I think is probably the most impressive thing on this. And uh, so we got Bomberman, Duke Nukem and Jump and Bump and Minecraft. So Bomberman first, and I think I'll switch into screen capture for this. So let's jump straight into a game. There's various different versions. You can use keyboard or control. I'm using the keyboard for this. I think it's X to drop a bomb. Yeah, and these, uh, the blocks come down, uh, so almost like a sort of Tetrisy thing. So you run out of uh, usable space. So you've got to be careful of that. I got caught out on that last time. Not the best as a single player game, but as multiplayer, superb. Tucking people up is uh, part of the fun. There you go. That's when it comes down. And I got trapped in this block to the right here uh, earlier on. Oh, stuck. Oh, I won. So to quit out of this, you have to uh, do it from quitting out of the game. So if I press escape and yes, but that takes you back into RetroPie. So Duke Nukem, uh, I'm going to be using a trackpad for this because if I unplug a USB device, it actually reboots. So you need to make sure it's plugged in at the same time. So I'm going to be using my portable keyboard, um, but uh, you'll get the idea because it, it actually looks, this, this to me was the most impressive. Uh, that this ran so well in it. I know it's a really old game, but it's such a great game. And you can see all the menus are super fast. 
So you can see it's pretty smooth and it does work really fast. Get some medics there. Guy in here. So super fast. <laughs> to think it's on such a tiny device, I still find this amazing. Oh, another guy. I do like shooters with less buttons. And I'll show you how to install this in a minute uh, because it is it is really straightforward and it installs the whole game. You don't have to do anything extra. Uh, RetroPie just kind of handles it all for you. But uh, yeah, I was impressed with that. And again, quick game takes you back to the RetroPie menu eventually. And uh, let's do Minecraft as the last one before I show you how to install those ports. And this is the Pi version of Minecraft, so um, that's why it works so well on such low specs. But uh, still enjoyable, still nice and smooth. Here we go. So I was surprised at how smooth it was actually. It's pretty good. And I've already got a sword. I don't know how I've already got a sword. See what let's get up high and see what the draw distance is like. Spin around, or oh, pretty short, but uh, I guess that's how they get the performance as is, as good as it is. Oh, can't get up there. There you go, I was impressed with that. Right, so let's quit out of that and I'll show you how to install the ports. So look for RetroPie on here. Oh, I was gonna show PlayStation when I, let's quickly show Castlevania, which was okay. And I guess possibly if you can play around with it enough, you might be able to get it to work all right. And interesting, a lot of the intros and the videos, so this is a bit jerky, but some of the others are actually really quite smooth. Uh, I mean, obviously the PlayStation was very low resolution. So it's nearly there, maybe with a bit of tweaking, it might be all right, uh, but it, it needs to be a bit faster, really. So let's quit out of that and go into the RetroPie menu and RetroPie setup. And if you go into manage packages and manage experimental packages, and what was interesting in here, and I can't remember this shows up on the Raspberry Pi 4, but it comes up Dolphin, uh, the GameCube and Wii emulator, uh, but it says that it's not supp supported on this Pi, uh, and it comes up as a Raspberry Pi 1. Um, but, uh, yeah, various different things. Even the PS2 emulator is showing up there. Now, possibly when... I mean, certainly the... The Dolphin emulator is actually quite reasonable as a standalone in a desktop environment, um, but it'd be nice to see it come to RetroPie. And uh, PS2 is obviously unlikely to ever be on the Pi, uh, or the Pi 4 at least. Uh, and ReDream is, uh, is checked out as well, but again, they're more modern systems, so they're bound not to work. But if you keep going down, you will get to ports. I think it's in this section. If it's not, it will be in one of the others. Yeah, ports. So all you do is just click on it. So there's Bomberman. Uh, I've got Jump and Bump, Minecraft, and the Duke one must be in one of the other systems. But if you wanted to install something, so say you wanted to install Quake 2, just click on it and install from pre-compiled binary and yes, and that'll install it. And once it's installed, you go back to ports and you can launch that particular game. And this did exactly the same for Duke, but it must be under one of the other so there's uh, optional and uh, experimental. There's various different packages. Just go through them and see what you want and install. So let me know in the comments what you use your Pi Zero for and also what sort of games you've had running on it because I'm super impressed by this tiny inexpensive device. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.